I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com, and thanks for being here for my and our Journey Through the Real Book, number 142, a Keith Jarrett tune called Grow Your Own. And this is very gratifying for me to make these videos because you know, with my piano teaching, I teach everybody from beginners to professionals all around the world, jazz, rock, getting you started or bringing it up to the professional level and getting you gigging, and it's incredibly gratifying. And part of it is connected with why I'm making these videos because there, you know, I started teaching online in 2012, right? And right now, I don't know when you're watching this, in this week or in the future, but it's 2020, January 2020. So I've been on the internet about eight years. This is the, what, maybe third year. I'm putting out one of these every week, so just under 150 videos, my third year. Is it end of the second year, third year? No, wait, can I do math? No, it's the third year. And um, uh, it's the cumulative effect of these that I'm going for is to give you the context of the tunes because as we move through history farther away from the source of these, and this is written in 1970, 71, first recording, um, it, it just, they become notes on the page or on an old recording. And there's uh, a culture that produced this and the, we don't learn jazz anymore by immersing ourselves in the culture because it's not on the popular radio stations or anything like it was, say, in the 30s, 40s, 50s. I caught the tail end of that. You could still hear a lot more jazz when I was a teenager, for instance, in the 70s, when I was working as a dishwasher in restaurants or they had a pianist playing some jazz in the, in the restaurant or, you know, folk singers strumming the guitar and would do a couple of little ragtimey tunes. You'd hear that more integrated into the pop music of the time than you would now, for instance. But you can still find it. That's the amazing thing about the internet. It's everywhere, but it's not necessarily as we're walking down the street part of the culture. So when I was studying with Billy Taylor in the 80s and a wonderful uh, player named Hale Smith at University of Connecticut, they actually learned how to play piano as teenagers before bebop in the late 30s, early, early 40s. And then they came up through bebop and, and post-bop, particularly Billy Taylor. So um, I am trying to pass some of that along to you. So you, know, you can really learn this stuff in a little different way than just opening the book and, oh, okay, what is this, you know? So Boston, Boston, Massachusetts, east coast of the U.S., late 60s. Keith Jarrett is a um, uh, college student at the Berkeley College of Music. Didn't last long, I don't know if he was there for a full year or more, but he dropped out, um, or left rather, not dropped out, but he left to uh, play professionally with um, uh, Charles Lloyd, and, um, uh, well first um, Art Blakey. So he, some straight ahead jazz and then a little more jazz rock with Charles Lloyd. And they became very big actually. They used to play on the same bills as rock acts and everything and known to at least uh, some portion of the general public. But the bass player on this, so Gary Burton and Keith Jarrett did an album together in 1971 called Gary Burton and Keith Jarrett. And you should check it out. It's a great album. And it's really reflective of this live, living uh, sort of vibrancy of what must have been in Boston at that time. I don't know, I was six years old and not in Boston. But basically, Steve Swallow seems to be the hero of this. And there's a lot of Steve Swallow tunes in the real book because he knew the students who were the original compilers of the real book at Berkeley. And they asked him, can we put a bunch of your tunes in? And he said, yeah. But at the same time, Chick Corea and um, Gary Burton recorded some Steve Swallow tunes. Keith Jarrett wrote these, this tune, Grow Your Own, which sounds like a Steve Swallow tune. And Steve Swallow's playing bass on this. Steve Swallow is like the unsung hero of jazz fusion from the Boston area, area as Miles was uh, Miles Davis was developing it and others elsewhere. But without Steve Swallow, I don't think there would have been uh, this sort of rockish side or gospel-y side of Keith Jarrett, not in the same way at least. Certainly not Keith's tunes, which seem, seem to me to be heavily influenced by Swallow. And also um, Chick Corea, I mean, you know, was writing tunes just like that, you know? Big influence on all this. And you can find his stuff. You can find videos and recordings of Steve Swallow, great electric bass player. So Grow Your Own reflects that time. That's what I'm getting at. So it's rock, and it's an unusual tune. It's not A-A-B-A, -A -A, like you know, Cole Porter would have generally written and those people. 
So it has this, this opening, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a 15 measure section. That's unusual. And it bounces around. Now here, in this measure, it's the 1, 2, 3, 4th measure of the melody. Take out your pencil, and the rhythm struck me as very, very odd and, and jarring. And then I, I listened back to the recording, which I really hadn't heard since the 70s. And it's wrong. If you look at the end of the last 16th note on the second um, beat, the F and the D, that should be on beat three. So instead of that, it's see? So it's one. It just makes more sense. I knew something was wrong when I played that. Like I said, I verified it. And then there's some very jazzy stuff. Uh, Lydian flat seven scale. And then, uh, you know, it bounces around kind of randomly here. And then it's like Jarrett knew that. He has to ground it somehow. So then at letter B, it's just this bam. James Brown kind of groove, so in my ears at least. And then the letter C, again, it's just triads. They're not seventh chords, they're not particularly jazzy like that. And he's bouncing around, you know, unusual things like... A little gospel-y, but a little pop in that way, and then you get these... Uh, you know who else was writing music around this time? Um, Vince Guaraldi for the Peanuts Charlie Brown specials. And you hear that kind of stuff. Uh, you can even play that kind of country bluesy Lloyd Kramer uh, licks on that. It all ties together. You hear British pop music from the late 60s that bounces around different keys kind of randomly in the same way. It's all in the air in Boston at that time. So if you can sink your teeth into that, listen to some of this music, you're much better equipped to play a tune like Grow Your Own. And then the improvs, as it says, are on letter uh, B for a while, and then um, improvise on C. And I'll, I'll use a lot of pentatonic scales and then get a little chromatic. So um, here we go, Grow Your Own. <laughs>
this is a great tune. As you can hear, it's an adventure. You kind of got to, at first, you know, I practiced this really slowly at first. These, I wanted to get some of these, these uh, um, alto lines. dive into this uh, early 70s, late 60s sort of Boston era stuff. Steve Swallow, Keith Jarrett, Gary Burton, Chick Corea, they influenced all the jazz to come after that in the whole fusion and even ECM type stuff. Thanks for being here. If you're interested in lessons, I teach on Skype or my video course at keyboardimprov.com. I have ebooks there as well. Good luck with your own playing and hope to see you in the next video.